is on tonight. Marriage is the most fundamental institution of civilization, and it should not be redefined by activist judges. Should there be a constitutional amendment against gay marriage? The Senate is debating it, so will we. It was their intent to use it for a terrorist attack. Canadian authorities arrest 17 alleged terrorists who have explosives. Why would they want to attack Canada? And a Texas teacher, a former beauty pageant person, is in big trouble for having an affair with a student. Caution. You are about to enter a no-spin zone. The factor begins right now. Hi, I'm Bill O'Reilly. Thanks for watching us tonight. The proposed constitutional amendment supporting traditional marriage. That's the subject of this evening's Talking Points memo. The issue is not really about the acceptance of gay marriage. It's about a bunch of liberal judges trying to impose their vision of America on the entire country. Activist judges are going around the folks, and the folks don't like it. Yes, there's a political component here. President Bush needs to re-energize his conservative base, and this issue gets their attention. I didn't think the president would make such a big deal out of the constitutional amendment, but he has. However, the right of the people to run their own country is paramount in this debate. According to a recent Gallup poll, 58% of Americans want marriage to have a man-woman definition. 39% support gay marriage. In California and Oregon, two liberal states, referendums supported traditional marriage, and gay marriage is voted down. So there's no question what the people want. Writing in the Boston Herald, Ted Kennedy says, you are bigoted if you oppose gay marriage. That's the usual far-left tactic. Disagree with me? You're a bad person. But the truth is that many who oppose gay marriage do so because they believe that society is better served by putting traditional marriage in a special place. The belief that heterosexual marriage is a stabilizing force is a strong one. If gay marriage were legalized, then polygamy would have to be. Once you begin to alter the traditional definition of marriage under equal protection, you can't stop at one alternative situation and then deny other alternative situations. That would never pass constitutional muster. The gay marriage issue is perhaps the most vivid example of the nation's culture war. Secular progressives like Ted Kennedy want a new America, one that nurtures everyone, one that caters to the individual needs and wants. Traditionalists like me believe the USA has become strong because of its core values of freedom, individual responsibility, and institutions like traditional marriage, which foster common goals. E pluribus unum, out of many, one. Some activist judges would like to tear that philosophy down, but they have no right to dictate how this country operates and what the law should be. The folks decide that by voting. In the case of gay marriage, the folks have decided, and that decision should be respected. And that's a memo. Now for the top story tonight, a new study about gay marriage, which says allowing homosexuals to wed actually benefits marriage in general. Joining us now from Washington, William Eskridge, Jr., co-author of the book, Gay Marriage, For Better or For Worse, What We've Learned from the Evidence. Here in the studio, Darren Spidali, the other co-author of the book. Mr. Spidali, to begin with you. I have the stats, and, and I, I've gone over these stats all afternoon, and I can't really extrapolate anything from them. Where am I going sure. wrong? Well, I think the purpose of this book is really to shed some light on one of the big mysteries that people keep facing, which is they keep hearing about defending marriage and protecting marriage, but nobody ever really tells them exactly what they're defending or protecting marriage from. So here we've actually looked and there's, we found a lot of people who might otherwise be in favor of same-sex marriage, but are concerned that there may be some terrible or negative effects if we actually allowed same-sex couples to marry. So we said, it's important to look at those countries that have actually had a form of same-sex marriage now for 17 years and get to the real question, which is, what really happens to society when their country allows gay couples to marry? Does, are these terrible effects? Do people end up uh, marrying dolphins, or is it really just a much more narrow issue? Okay, and the conclusion you have come to, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that there hasn't been that much change. But in the Netherlands, there has. In uh, births outside of marriage, that's doubled. But in the rest of the countries, Denmark, Norway, Sweden, Mr. Eskridge, it, it's basically the same. Although in Norway, this is very interesting, in the southern part of Norway, more conservative part of the country, births outside of marriage much lower than the liberal northern part. Well, interestingly, Mr. O'Reilly, what we found in Denmark, which has had registered partnerships since 1989, 
uh, the marriage rate had actually been falling in Denmark until 89. The divorce rate had been rising. Right. And the rate of non-marital births went up from 11% in the early 70s to over 45% in the late 80s. And the interesting thing is, after Denmark recognized same-sex unions, the marriage rate went back up. The divorce rate fell, and the rate of non-marital children stabilized, and in the last five years, it's stabilized at a lower level than in 1989. All right, Professor, so one of the things we show in the book is that the situation from a traditional point of view actually improved in Denmark. Okay, but now I'm going to dash Professor, and you, Professor teaches at Yale. I'm going to be a wise guy student. I'm going to tell you that according to the statistics in Scandinavia, cohabitating parents, which now make up the majority of couples um, in some countries like Sweden, break up two to three times the rate of married parents. Is that true? Uh, I give you an A, Mr. O'Reilly. Thank you, sir. Uh, but the point is that in Sweden, we've seen some of the same trends that we saw in Denmark. So in Sweden, the rate of marriage uh, had been plummeting before 1994 when they adopted same-sex unions. The rate of marriage has been increasing in Sweden okay. since 1994. I, I think what we and could the, draw... And, and et cetera. I think what same, we can draw from true this... In Norway. I think we can draw this... This is what I'm drawing from all of your data. That gay marriage per se, the marriage of homosexuals, doesn't really impact on straight marriage for those who want a traditional union. But it does, Mr. Spidelli, yes. it does lead to a more libertine or permissive society in the sense that marriage itself then is de-emphasized, as we see in Sweden, and more and more people cohabitate. No, I think that's not true. I think exactly we saw the opposite, and that's why these statistics are so interesting. In Denmark, Norway, and Sweden, in each of those countries, after they passed their gay marriage type laws, their registered partnership laws, the rates of heterosexual marriage went up per capita, the rates of heterosexual divorce went down. But they're still mighty low. I mean, look. But they've changed. In Sweden and Norway and the Netherlands, all right, those three countries, the United States rate of marriage is double. Double. Why? Well, I, I think the, the main point we want to get... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why? You lived in Denmark for two years, all right? In Nor Netherlands, Norway, and Sweden, the rate of marriage is half of that in the United States. Why? A lot of couples choose to live their lives together, permanent relationships, but they just don't get a marriage license. Why? A lot of them decide that they still want to spend their lives together, raise children. They decide that the certificate itself isn't so important. Right. But the important thing here really is the fact that we found that gay marriage in practice does not affect and may even actually have the I opposite I will give effects. you that point. I, I agree with both of you that that's true, that, that Lenny, Mary, and Squiggy doesn't have anything to do with anybody marrying a woman, any man or a man or a woman marrying a man. But I will submit to you that the permissiveness and the de-emphasis on traditional marriage has affected these Scandinavian societies, Professor. I don't think there's any doubt about it. Mr. O'Reilly, I give you another A. But one of the reasons that the divorce rate has gone up in Scandinavia is no-fault divorce. Same is true in the United States. One reason that the cohabitation rate has gone up in Scandinavia is that cohabitation in Scandinavia is legally supported. We've also seen that in the United States. Uh, a statistic that's also in our book, as are the ones that you mentioned, is that the number of households raising children in the United States with a single parent is between 25 and 26 percent. In Denmark, it's between 18 and 19 percent. Right, but they're not married. That's the thing. That's right. And, 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 the, that's, the and, that's, and that's the whole we have crux of the issue. And, and I think you guys did very good research, and, I, and I, don't f I think it's a very interesting book and people should read. But I will say this. The people who oppose gay marriage, they believe the traditional family, the married man and woman, are best qualified to marry children. In this country, that's the overwhelming issue. Gentlemen, thanks for coming in. Thank we you appreciate very much. it. Next on the rundown.